Welcome to episode 7 of The Bar is Ankle High. Welcome! I'm Katie. I'm Garrett. And uh, today we're going to talk about ADHD and coping with stress, but before we get to that, um, first I wanted to say thank you to all of our Patreon subscribers. Uh, we love having you here. Um, and if you want to become an anklet on our Patreon, you can find the link to that on our website. Or just at patreon.com slash the bar's ankle high. And like, who would not want to be an anklet? Classic. Cute. So cute. Timeless. And you get a special little note from us. So, you know, Also cute. You got that going for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and in a callback to our, I think it was actually episode four, emotional dysregulation episode. Mm, mm-hmm. Um... I saw something on Instagram this morning uh, that, because the whole time that Garrett was talking about emotional dysregulation, I was like, that's not me. Mm -hmm. I don't feel big emotions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I saw this thing that I think is like a, it's like a Tumblr post. Yep. And we're just going to add this to the list of, you know, 10,000 things that have happened in the last couple months. We've gone, oh. (laughs) That's me. (laughs) Um, This post says... (laughs) And we can, we'll add this to the post for the episode, too. Yes, yes, yes. People can read it. Um, You want it on this episode or the one for... We'll do it for the, I think we should do it for the dysregulation. This calls this recognition responsive euphoria, or RRE. The ADHD brain is turned up to 11. Our neurotransmitters burn bright. On an emotional level, this means we feel the stabbing pain of rejection, frustration, and failure more acutely than others do. On the flip side, we also experience a meaningful and powerful zing of energy and esteem with every word of encouragement, appro- encouragement, praise, or approval that we receive. The smallest gesture can power euphoria and great accomplishments for us. Um, and, uh, wow, if that's not me, I don't there's, know. <laughs> there's a gif um, that I use to describe Katie to Katie frequently <laughs> and it's the one of that little girl at looks like a sporting event or something and somebody gives her cotton candy and she takes a bite of it and clearly gets like that sugar rush and just like <laughs> can't even she's like gritting her teeth and making this crazy face and like pumping her hands um <laughs> and that that I think would be a good description of yeah, and that that's other end of the spectrum. Absolutely how I feel every right. time I'm told that, like, what I did was exceptional. They're like, hey, good job. And Katie's like, ah. Oh, totally. Like, that is my anti-drug back yes. when that was a whole thing. Yes. Like, oh, doing sports is my anti-drug. Uh. Well, getting compliments on how great I am at something. <laughs> Telling me that I'm great. Yeah. That's my love language. <laughs> um, yes, the emotional di- dysregulation, that off-the-cuff response is for good and bad. So yeah. it's for all of the things. Causes a very intense, skips right over that how should I respond thought and just goes right to act. Yeah. So I think inherently I think of it as a bad thing like temper tantrums. Right. Or, yes. Um, Popping you know, off on any, somebody. Yeah. I think in general the phrase like flying off the handle is not seen as a good thing. Like I can fly off the handle into euphoria. She sure can. <laughs> That's where my toxic optimism comes from. <laughs> because it turns out I can only hear good things about myself. So, yes. Which is really uh, a skill. I, I have the other end of that where I only hear the bad things. Somebody can be like, you did a great job. Just make sure next time you work on this. I'm like, well, I'm a failure. I can't believe I did that wrong. Nope, that was not the message that was just delivered to you. But uh, my brain only hears the bad. <laughs> that's, my, that's my shitty superpower. <laughs> I certainly can do that, but I'm more, more often if I like am really in a bad spot, I'll just do that to myself. Mm -hmm. And my GP, when I got diagnosed, the reason that he put me slash kept me on five milligrams of Lexapro was to stop that anxiety spiral, which Mm. according to him was very common for neurodivergent people because Mm -hmm. it's so easy to slip into this 
I'm just not doing it right. I'm bad yeah. at everything. Yeah. Yada yada. And it turns out that <laughs> the reason I think that is because huh. I I've somehow acknowledge that other people react differently. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Weird. Yeah. A little strange. Anyway. <laughs> Somebody's wrong. <laughs> but it's not me. Also, um, I think we should add another episode to our ADHD series, uh, called ADHD and Pooping Pants. <laughs> so I should mention, I was doing some research for another episode we have coming up, Poor Planning, and I googled ADHD and P. I hadn't typed the rest of Poor Planning. You did you do P-O-O. Oh, I, okay. Yeah. Pooping Pants is the first thing that came up mm-hmm. on Google. And then it was like, you know, like poor spatial awareness... Poor focus, like all of these normal things that would and be coming poop up. Poop accidents. Poop accidents and pooping <laughs> pants were in that list of recommended. When Google's like, do you really mean this? Sure, definitely not poor planning. It has to be ADHD and pooping pants. I can confirm at least that a side effect of the methylphenidate that I am prescribed is not shitting myself yeah, spontaneously. Yeah, I've never... Which is... Interesting in that it is a stimulant, much like coffee. Coffee does make me have to poop. (laughs) Usually I make it to a toilet. But my meth doesn't. My meth does not stimulate my bowels. Weird. Weird. (laughs) So anyway, uh, if you have ADHD, be on the lookout for pooping your pants. Evidently. If you haven't already. Or uh, various poop accidents. I wonder if Lisa Rinna's Depends uh, ad campaign covered... Time out. (laughs) Pump the brakes before you continue with that thought. <laughs> when? <laughs> Let me rephrase Since that. Since 2000. When the fuck <laughs> did Lisa Renna start doing Depends ads? It's within the last 20 years. Like, I I just, I have very distinct memories of seeing her. And it's like, she's walking a red carpet and she's in this silk gown. And uh-huh. it's like, you'd never know. And she, like, turns around to, like, do that over-the-shoulder, like, coquettish look. Absolutely not. And then it's, like, depends. Ultra slim. Absolutely not. And to God. I'm telling you. I know you're looking at that. I am, because I I gotta know. (laughs) How did I miss? Some intermission music. (laughs) (laughs) This was ten years ago. I think it was recent. Okay, so hold up. Now I gotta know how old Lisa Rinna is, because... 10 years ago she was what like 45 yeah she was you'd think too young but then at the same time i mean i guess like she's 59 right now so she wasn't even 50 yeah and she was doing ads for depends yeah because age is am i missing something illegal am We went two different ways with that. So Katie took it to like the, can you believe how terrible just the patriarchy is that it's got women feeling like they can't age? Meanwhile, I'm like, hold the fuck up. Am I going to start becoming incontinent when I'm in my late 40s? Every woman I know who's had a child says that they, especially if they've had a vaginal delivery, they oh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm piss like, regularly. During, like, normal lifestyle activities. I'm just... So I don't think it depends for dookies. Because then I feel like you lose the discrete factor if you've got some stank in your... So... Tank. I... (laughs) I guess, um... They're gonna need to get an ADHD spokesperson to do a ADHD don't poop your pants depends ad where you're just so distracted with things that you're doing you can't feel... That you have to shit, and you shit your pants. You shit your We're going to end up getting sponsored by Depends, and you're going to have to read that ad. Just FYI. <laughs> All I'm saying is I need a lot of creative license with it. I can be funny about it, but you need to give me a wide berth, and I can do all the funny poop jokes. They're not going to want funny poop jokes. They're going to want a serious ad where I'm like, did I? Oh, did I just shit my pants? Like Urkel Oopsie in Daisy. 2021. <laughs> did I do that? <laughs> Yes, ma'am, you did. I had an oopsie daisy in the conference room at work. <laughs> Thankfully, I didn't have to stop my PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> Thanks, Depends. 
and just point to my ass with a giant diaper. Like flies behind you. Big pen walking around. Ah, uh, well, that was a nice little. That was a nice little adventure we went on. Yeah, welcome um, to the bar's ankle high, folks. <laughs> and what are we talking about today, Katie? <laughs> Other than pooping. Your pants. Well, one stressful situation I would imagine is being a grown adult and having. Uh, bowel evacuation issues in public. Yes. Uh, I would agree with that. That's pretty stressful. That is stressful. <clears throat> now, um, I decided to take this topic <laughs> because uh, when Garrett and I were plotting out, or when Garrett was making me plot out this podcast. <laughs> I do have a habit of doing that. <laughs> uh, refer to our, our next episode on poor planning. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but, uh, I said, oh, I'm really good at coping with stress. I'll take that one. <laughs> and I said, oh, I'm, I'm really bad at coping with stress, so I'm not going to take that one. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So let's learn stuff. <laughs> so tell me what it's like. What is it like to cope with stress as opposed to letting it dominate your brain and melting down? See, so I do this thing and I don't know... To the extent that, like, I don't know if this is a recent development because of just things that have happened in my life or if this is how I always was. I think this is how I always was, but I very much feel like I compartmentalize it all. Mm -hmm. So for me, I'm like, yeah, I'm really good at coping with stress because I ignore it. (laughs) Turns out Katie's just really good at avoidance. Uh, It's not so much coping with stress. It's just, oh, that doesn't exist. I mean, that is a way to cope. It's like the opposite. Remember that book, The Secret, that came out where it was like, you just have to wish it into... And yeah. Katie's like, yeah, I just do just the opposite. Just manifest it. Katie's like, it doesn't exist, so I'm not Can't hurt me it. if it's not real. <sighs> Suck on that, dragons! <laughs> um, somewhat related to that, uh, so you know how in Cinderella, the cartoon, she's like, a dream is a wish your heart makes, yada yada, and her little bird friends want to know what her dream is about. Mm-hmm. And she's like, I can't tell you because then it'll come true. So my theory that I still live by Uh is that if I have a nightmare, I have to tell somebody about it so that it can't come true. (laughs) And I've done it since childhood. Like, if you tell me your nightmare, it can't happen because then, you know, a dream is... So how often are you, like, I would say one of my, like, recurring nightmares that I have in various fashions is I'm running late, I'm not dressed appropriately... I fall when I go into where I'm going, where I'm late and people are waiting for me, and I get, like, dirt on myself, and then my... (laughs) And then usually, like, there's something wrong with my teeth. Like, either they're falling out, or I'm drooling, or something. And it's usually, like, that series of things all happens. So if I just start telling people about that, which I have been for a while, um... They're like, uh, They're like, yeah, that's plausible, Garrett. You should definitely worry about that on yes. a regular basis. <laughs> yeah, I tell people, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's, I've had dreams like that. Katie's like, oh, oh my nightmare, yeah, my a nightmares are like, I get me. caught in a tornado and I'm launched yeah. across town yeah. and then have to land and then figure out where I am and find my people. Like, I have to gather my people with me for safety yeah. and I'm being like, chased by an alien or there's some sort of like outbreak situation or like something I can't get to something is usually yeah usually I do have dreams where I'm stuck in like a um like a natural disaster like a hurricane or I'm in like a tsunami or Mm -hmm. I'm stuck in like a whirlpool situation but usually it's like I'll have one that I'm running late to like the SATs which happened to me or I'm running late to my wedding and I'm wearing this like shitty dress and I get mud all over it and I'm like a half hour late. That is the type of dream that I have. And like my hair is a mess. I've had and... dreams where I somebody else has been running late to their wedding and so for some reason my solution to that problem is that I step in. <laughs> I'm like it's fine, it's fine. We'll just change the name on the certificate. It's fine. It's fine. So you're like clearly this bride like is running IOU. late to her wedding. So I'm just going to stand in and because otherwise it would inconvenience the guests that is a real interesting take <laughs> on so maybe we're having like maybe this connected is why i don't dreams. get invited to too many weddings we're having like connected <laughs> dreams and like i'm running late to the right. wedding and katie's at I'm the like, wedding it's, it's like, okay i'll solve it it's I'll fine i have a solution <laughs> 
Just hold on, folks. Hi, yes, yep, a friend of the bride taking over. No worries, just a (laughs) stand-in. Maybe that's the lawyer thing where I'm like, it's fine, I have authority to sign on behalf of my client. Yes, I had her sign this ahead of time just in case she was running late. And her teeth were falling out of her head and she wore (laughs) inappropriate clothes and fell in mud on her way here. All of those things are listed. And there's a hurricane. Because I learned how to be good at planning from Garrett. (laughs) Who clearly isn't good at coping with stress. (laughs) Um, So I found several different articles on this topic. But uh, ADHD, as we've discussed previously, is very often found with comorbid conditions and difficulty coping with stress is most commonly reported by those who also struggle with anxiety and low conscientiousness. Hey, (laughs) I don't know anything about that. Cognitive deficits in inattention and impulsivity result in ADHDers having limited resources to cope with stress, typically seen in a lack of support networks within their social circle. Uh, Attention deficits mean they can struggle with reappraising situations or draw on, quote, planful problem solving, cognitive reframing, and taking the perspective of others, unquote. Hmm. Um, Impulsive tendencies mean that they can respond to stress often aggressively and spontaneously. Hmm. And those with anxiety can also find themselves responding to stress with just actively avoiding the issue or not acknowledging it. So that hurt me. (laughs) Here I am, like, listening to all these other things, like, oh, maybe you start feeling really overwhelmed, or maybe this happens. I'm like, "Uh uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And it's like, (laughs) ding, ding, ding. Maybe you just avoid it. And Katie was like, oh. (laughs) Just add that to the list of oh moments. That'd be two for this episode so far. me. It's Sean Connery, of course. (laughs) Ah, that's rich. That's great. Five stars. Uh, So... (laughs) This uh, first article I found on Science Direct uh, says cognitive behavioral therapy can help um, adapt coping strategies and ADHD participants in one of these studies were more likely to use maladaptive coping strategies like being confrontational, avoidant, or spontaneous problem solving. (laughs) We've both been attacked. Although I think we're both good with spontaneous problem solving. I think that that... Like, goes into the superpower column yes. because it does make us an asset in any team project because yes. it's very easy for me to, like, rework a path around whatever the issue is. Same. Yeah. Like, I do I do think, like, the more anxious component makes me feel overwhelmed by stress, but I think when it comes down to, like, in a overwhelming situation, a lot of times I can just, like, snap focus and I'm, I can be cool and collected and, like, on point. Yeah, I think I think that kind of ties into probably the amygdala thing, though, like that fight yeah. or flight. Like, I'm really good at fighting my way through whatever it is. Oh, yeah, my amygdala is, like, jacked. <laughs> I've got a real muscular... Your amygdala is taking... I've got a real thick... <laughs> I have a amygdala full of uh, ephedra <laughs> that it has That's been offended. saving since the 90s. <laughs> My amygdala is like a 90s pro baseball player. <laughs> Bloody sock and all. Just loaded. <laughs> with testosterone and performance enhancing <laughs> drugs and ephedra. If you understand that reference, it's time for a nightly eye cream. <laughs> it's time to include retinol in your routine. Am I going to? No. <laughs> but that's not what we're here for. Anyway. <laughs> um... ADHD people were better at readjusting to changes within the stressful situation, Mm -hmm. uh, which we've also mentioned in our previous episodes, and we tend to be way more optimistic, even with our comorbid conditions like anxiety and depression, um, ADHD folks are better at creative problem solving. Um, Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. I think the... Even if it's more reactionary and less planful. I mean, we get there. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) I mean... I think as I've gotten older, too, that's definitely, um, I categorize things under figure outable. So there are times where maybe I'm not going to dedicate all the time to figure it out now, but I know there's a solution. And if I spend a couple hours thinking about it, I also tend to do a lot of passive thinking. 
where I'm working on something but not actively thinking about it. So I'm Mm -hmm. walking, doing something else, and kind of chewing on something. And actually, I would say almost everybody in my life, everybody, I'm going to correct that, everybody in my life has heard me say, let me chew on it. And I will let you know. I have to think about it. And then I come up with a solution. Yeah. Which kind of... Yeah. (laughs) Yes, I can. I was going to go on a really ridiculous tangent that we don't need to go on right now. (laughs) We're in for a long day. (laughs) Um, All right. So then I was on our favorite magazines page, Attitude Mag. And... um, Great resource. Yeah, they had an article on ADHD relaxation techniques to reduce stress. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I thought you'd appreciate it. Like the green time we were talking about in the last episode. So the first tip they have, which I think is, like, critical and so easy to forget, is stop blaming yourself for your ADHD. Like, acknowledge that you have it and stop blaming yourself for not doing whatever it was that you missed. Chores, a bill deadline, etc. Like, ADHD is neurobiological. It's how you were made, and it's not going to go away. I think that's been one of the best parts about doing this series Mm -hmm. is, I mean, downside is I've been focusing on it so much that I'm incredibly frustrated with myself at all times. Mm -hmm. But the other side of that is it's given me a more biological understanding of it. Yes. So I'm understanding that this is coming down to brain chemistry, brain function. This is not my choice to just be bad at focusing. Right. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And for a long time, I was thinking about this last night, but like... For the longest time, it was so easy for me to dismiss, like, oh, I'm just always on my phone because I'm always on my phone, and I've got Facebook and Instagram on my phone, Mm -hmm. and emails, and when my work email was tied to my phone, um, when I was in the private sector, and during COVID, I mean, it was just constant. Like, my first vacation when I went to the public sector where I didn't have my email on my phone was, Mm -hmm. like outrageous like I almost didn't know what to do with myself it's almost like when you're a kid and you go on summer break yes that's what it feels like to not have work email on your phone yes so I thought I it's not that I'm you know I have ADHD I'm just bad at being an adult yeah like and so yeah this series has definitely given me a better understanding of just like how I work Mm -hmm. And how a lot of the people in my life work, because a lot of the people I know have it, you know, like you and my mom and my brother and probably several of my relatives outside of those people. (laughs) Um, Yes, it's definitely, there's a lot of times and a lot of things about myself that I've had a hard time kind of putting my finger on, Mm -hmm. haven't been able to really figure out like why I do these things and why I have a hard time relating to other people sometimes like the emotional dysregulation for me was like mind blown and that's not on the list of regular ADHD symptoms Mm -hmm. we kind of lumped a bunch of those together yeah um you know mood swings and frustration tolerance and things like that but um the way it's bundled up and described usually is as emotional dysregulation but anyway that was a really like pivotal thing for me because I was like oh my god this is not just that I'm emotional or overly sensitive or this so that's like no there's like a there's a biological reason why my brain does that right exactly and to think of it like that like you would think of ibs or right. celiac disease and like or, all i can do is work on it right like i can do things to help my body work better yes to serve me yes and what i do for my my life, you know, how I live my life, whatever. And if that's eating a whole pint of Stewart's ice cream like I did last <laughs> night, then so be it. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Just like that. Just like that. <laughs> that is the prime example. When I Googled it, this is what came up. It was pooping pants and eating a whole pint of ice cream. For your health. Yes. It was, it was vegan ice cream. Does that, <laughs> does that make it any better? I looked at the calorie content, like the nutrition label inside, and I was like, oh, no, nobody needs to see this. Nope. Just going to nah. turn that right back a around. Refilant. And finish it. Um, yeah. So in, in acknowledging your ADHD, um, the article on attitudemag.com um, did say, you know, proper diagnosis and treatment is critical, like, and that includes therapy. And sometimes medication, and those are great starting points, as well as this podcast. I added that part in. That wasn't in the article. Creative (laughs) license, which you can do when you have a podcast. (laughs) 
Uh, the second tip they have is the exercise, which um, I know that we mention a lot. Uh, they note that physical activity naturally increases your brain's serotonin levels, which compa- combats the stress hormone cortisol. According to this article, one exercise session, such as a walk outdoors for 30 minutes, can increase relaxation and improve your mood for up to two hours. And over time, continue, continuous and regular exercise can raise your threshold for stress. So mm. you get to that point where because you constantly have your body is ready for the next serotonin boost, if you're regularly mm-hmm. going for that walk every day, then it, you know, your minimum threshold, the, the bar is no longer ankle high. <laughs> It's knee high now. Yeah, it keeps it keeps going. So then your your brain is better able to not produce cortisol right away, which is that stress hormone, and then throws the your whole body, all yeah. of your organs into right. that fight or flight mode. And then you're retaining water and you're bloated and grumpy. Right. And tired. Right. <laughs> and I will say the question that I ask myself if I'm not feeling motivated is will you feel, have you ever felt worse after coming back for a walk? And I've never felt worse Mm -hmm. back from a walk than before I left. Yeah. I always feel better doing it than not doing it. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather take the, even if it's just 15 minutes, than to not take it and then be grumpy. Yeah, even if I walk slow, which I do struggle with, because again, in my head, I'm like, if it's, if you're not walking fast, I'm getting sweaty, it's not a workout. Yep. Um... But yeah, even a slow walk. Totally. Because I often have to like tell myself like, we're not setting any speed records this time. We're just going for a walk. And I feel so much better when I take that arbitrary, fake, self-imposed stress. Uh, You know what I've noticed does help with that is I will sometimes take off my fitness tracker before I go Mm. so that I'm not checking the time, checking my pace, checking how many steps I have, checking how far I've gone. Anything like that. I go with the intention of just going and being clear. Yep. And I leave my tracker and I put my phone on do not disturb. Hmm. So I'm not getting notifications, but also can call for help if I get murdered. (laughs) Yeah. That's smart. (laughs) Uh, Listen to the bars ankle high for other safety tips. (laughs) Uh, Third tip is to measure time. So opposite of uh, your tip of take off the smartwatch. (laughs) This says use a smartwatch and set calendar reminders to go for that 30-minute walk or take a stretching break at work. (laughs) Well, use it for the reminder and then take it off while you go. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I make to-do lists at work all the time. Um, And basically how this has worked for me is like I make a to-do list of what I need to accomplish that day at work. And then as soon as that list is done, I can Mm -hmm. fuck off for the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. Like, obviously, I'm there to do work if my boss needs me to, but I don't have to put pressure on myself to accomplish more and to continue to be Mm -hmm. the most achieved person. Yes. Um, I usually will go into every day with a list. It doesn't matter if I'm working, home. Yeah. Of things I have to get done today and things I would like to get done today. Yeah. I think having that actual measurable finish line Mm -hmm. that's not set on when the clock hits 5 Mm p.m. is super important because it's you know like we struggle with deadlines and with procrastination so if you tell me I have until 5 to finish it well guess what I'm doing at 4 30 oh yeah then my brain's like "Mm, you really can't focus on that until it's at least four (laughs) o'clock yeah (laughs) Exactly. Ooh, you better wait on that. It's a little early to be working on this at noon. Yeah. It's like a, so yeah, my, my brain is like an avocado that just won't get ripe and Mm -hmm. then is ripe for 30 seconds and then starts getting ripe. Yeah. It's like hard, hard, hard. Ripe, 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 ripe. (laughs) Overripe. Yeah. Murdered. Yeah. Brown. Yeah. Useless. Brown and soft. Like... Oh, pooping your pants. Oh. <laughs> I thought you were going to say a depressing wiener. <laughs> Just the softies no. are no fun. No. No. Um, I was going... <laughs> no, go ahead. I was going to go off on a tangent about my favorite joke, but I'm not going to do that. So go ahead. <laughs> Nobody needs to hear that. Yeah, we'll, we'll put that on Patreon. Yes, please uh, subscribe. Not subscribe. What's the yeah. phrase? Subscribe to our Patreon? Yeah. Um, or join our Patreon. Become a Patriot. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
and uh, listen to me tell my favorite joke. Because <laughs> it's great. Um, the fourth tip is to create boundaries. Mm. This article recommends saying no three times a day. Oh. Usually to different people if possible. Each time you say yes to something, ask yourself what the trade-off is. What you have to say no to in order to say yes to that thing. This can also help if you're prone to like double booking yourself or not leaving yourself enough time to recharge your batteries every day mm. or every week. Mm -hmm. um, but I thought that was like, like, that's a good, just life tip. Yeah. I thought that that was like so day. useful Yes, because I think everybody is prone to over committing. Mm -hmm. Um, I know that happens to PK sometimes and he definitely does not have ADHD. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I can do that. Uh, yeah. That's actually one of my, uh, like in an interview, I usually list, kind of list that as a weakness. I'll say that. I have a tendency to overextend myself where I'll commit to, yes, I can take that on when I really probably don't have the time to take and it on. And that was rewarded our entire Forever. lives. Yep. Yeah. So, like, in school, in work, like, everybody loves to see, like, oh, this, you know, this girl's so industrious. She'll take on any project. She'll just face we'll it head on. We'll ask her to do like, it because she's not going to say yeah, no. Meanwhile, and Mount St. Helens is exploding inside my head. <laughs> yes, I'm the lady whose legs melt off in the lake. I'm like, I've done too much! <laughs> <laughs> Trying to crawl out. Um, <laughs> fifth tip is structure is life. Create a reliable mm. routine to minimize your chaotic gravy train. Mm -hmm. After dinner each night, as you're vegging out on the couch, make a little to-do list for the following day, even if it's something as simple as brush teeth, empty dishwasher, make coffee mm -hmm. to get your day started. And that way, that's a way to clear your mind before you go to bed and also gives you a direction immediately in the morning. So you're not kind of yes. like sitting there puttering around. I do every possible thing I can do ahead of time is done the night before because in the morning I'm not thinking. So I'm rolling out of bed and getting myself ready. And that and never no worked thoughts. for me. Like, I feel like as kids, we always heard like, lay out your clothes the night before. Mm -hmm. That never worked. For oh, me. didn't like, do it until like the last, I would say five years. I like, and I don't part, I, it's not, doesn't change anything. I never check the weather. I always assume that tomorrow's weather will be the same as today's weather. Um, and the irony is I will usually ask Katie about the weather because I also never check the weather and I just assume she's always checked it because she golfs. I do, when I'm going to golf, I, I do check the weather. But, like, it really fucks me over in the winter a lot because I'm just like, oh, it's fine. And then there's a fucking ice storm. And yes. I'm like, and I don't have socks on. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, the night before I try and get, like, my clothes are out for the next day. I'll even get, like, any makeup that I'm probably going to wear. I'll, like, pull out so that it's all handy. So that in the morning I'm not, like, wasting time looking through stuff because that's a recipe for disaster. Um, I, so recently my therapist had like challenged me to make to-do lists and especially on the weekends, I mm -hmm. use them so much to get stuff done around the house mm. and... That's when I use them the least. I actually usually don't use them on the weekends. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I, I definitely use them way more on the weekends, like for my home chores because I think I'm pretty good because I kind of like we naturally in my department, we naturally have like a running to-do list for me. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's not quite so bad, mm -hmm. um, or necessary unless there's like, like we have to do those trainings or something mm -hmm. that isn't immediately on, like in my face every day. Right. But, um, yeah, I do it at home, but I always like in reading these tips, I always struggled. Usually when it came to like, it would manifest in like my food choices and eating habits, but every time, especially in college and law school, every semester when my class times would change, mm -hmm. I would be so far out of whack for like the first month or so because I had to yeah. completely change yes. like when I'd wake up and when I'd do homework and this, that, and the other. And like, it's yes. not like you have any control over when they offer the classes. That's a really good part. point. Like, I never thought about that, but that was really, I, if I think about that now, it makes me anxious because... I have so much structure and everything's like, laid out. Like, just imagine and... every three months your work hours changed. Yeah, that's crazy to me. Yeah. I can't believe that we lived that way for... Especially with evening classes. Like, oh, one yeah. day a week I'd have a three-hour marathon class. Yeah. 
from 5 to 9 p.m. or something. Yep. Like, just I used to do, like, I would work most of the day. Mm-hmm. I would work, like, into the afternoon from the morning. And then I would have, like, a break where I could, like, have something to eat, do homework, whatever. And then I would have class from, like, 6 to 10 or something once a week. And I took, like, four or five. There was a couple few semesters that I did that where I took, like, basically only night classes. Mm-hmm. And then I was working, like, almost all day. And I would have, like, 13-hour days, like, four days a week. And I'm horrified uh, oh, that I, I was able to do that. I And did well. I feel like, like I need a nap just by hearing you describe yeah, it. it was terrible. it was bad. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I did it. <laughs> that Bo Burnham clip, I am not feeling good. <laughs> That's all, like, I think about going back to school now for anything, and I'm like, <gasps> I'm going to throw up. <laughs> Because, like, if I was just going to school, it'd be fine. But going to school and working and the way I home used to. And having two much. dogs and a spouse. And, and like, trying to, like, just, like, go to the gym, like, go to therapy, like, do the things that I do for myself. That's too, no. Totally. Unsubscribe. That's fair. Yeah. Like, and, yeah, so I was thinking about that and I was like, no, I always struggled. And it was always, whenever yeah. I did Weight Watchers, I would be a fucking mess every semester change. And... Like, I remember the leaders being like, okay, well, like, why don't you find a routine that works for you? And I'll be like, the yeah. fuck does that mean? I do, I'm and then trying, it changes. Right? Like, <laughs> there's only so much I can do, lady. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I know, like, when I went to college, the, the admit, like, when you were able to log in to pick your classes was yeah. based on seniority. So right. the people who were the farthest along got, like, the first pick. And then, the, I mean, there's, like, a, the first couple years, it's Oh, I would it's frequently nuts. have, like an 8.30 a.m. class, and then nothing until, like, 2 p.m. And then, like, from, like, 2 to 5, I'd have, like, Ugh. maybe two or three classes. Yeah. And then, so, like, my day was all all sorts of crazy. Which explains why, like, 18-year-olds can do that and not 35-year-olds. Yes. Yeah, because I commuted, so I was always trying to group days where I wouldn't have to go to campus at all and I could work. Yeah. Because I was, like, working... 20 to 30 hours a week while I was going to college and it was like with a full a full course load and I was constantly trying to like make both of those things work all the time I'm Stony you know Brook had a good huge... for you young Garrett for doing it yeah because <laughs> old Garrett wants nothing to do with that <laughs> oh how no oh no thank you no no uh Stony Brook had a massive commuter population Mm -hmm. actually and I was a commuter assistant for like three years um which is like being an RA but for Mm -hmm. commuters and they Mm -hmm. created that whole office because to like help commuters feel like they were actually connected to campus that's really nice because I did not have that and felt very disconnected I didn't really like make I uh, I mind you I lived on campus yeah yeah so you like but then they were just starting the program so I think they needed people and I was a Charity case. Yeah. (laughs) And I... I worked for the Dean of Students, so, like, I knew all of these people. So I think that that was really it, where they were like, well, you're you're weird. Yeah. You can can do it. Uh, Okay, so... uh, The the sixth thing, we we said structure is life, and to find a way to structure your life, like those overnight to-do lists. Mm -hmm. The sixth item on this list was to take time to play. Um... Make sure you keep room in your schedule for the quiet time mm. that your brain absolutely needs in order to function. Uh, and people with ADHD, people think that ADHD means that you're always moving and can't settle down. But I find that I'm closest to a meltdown after I've used up all my social energy. Mm-hmm. And I haven't had just a quiet moment where I can just be alone and not yes. have to speak to anybody. Like. So my go-to a lot of times is, like, I'll just take a nap. And that was mm-hmm. always my thing as a kid. Like, my mom was like, you'll nap anywhere. And I think so it bad probably it. was a reaction to overstimulation. Yes. Where my body will just shut down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it does, yeah, it takes a lot, of, physically takes a lot out of me. It definitely makes me tired. Yeah. I'm just really bad at napping. And I've had this moment with PK, actually, where I kind of, like, snapped at him one morning. And... um because he loves to talk. He really does. Mm-hmm. And he was calling me before work because he works the weekends. And um, I'm, like, trying to get ready for work. And he's just, like, talking. And it was, like, mundane nothing. Like, I couldn't even tell you what we were talking about. But Chatting. it was just stressing me out so much mm-hmm. because I was just trying to get my lunch made and 
get my shit together so that I could go to work and be on time. And I like completely snapped at him. And I was like, I'm sorry, I have to go. Because it was exactly like those memes that we see where somebody's doing like the inside of an ADHD brain and there's like three narrations going on at yes. the same time. That's exact. Because then you've got somebody narrating. And then someone's talking to me and I'm right. While you're thinking about. To respond to them right. and have thoughtful responses. And I just couldn't right. do it. And um, so, yeah, like that was a thing. And that's, and that's something that I say to him a lot. Like my triggers are not his responsibility. Mm-hmm. But once I figure out what my trigger is, it is my job to like manage that. Totally. To set that boundary and say like, mm-hmm. hey, I just need, I'm going to turn off my phone for a bit. Yep. Um, I just need to like have quiet time. Mm-hmm. And he's super understanding, you know, partly because we're both grown adults. But yeah, like, that helps. <laughs> fully developed. <laughs> but um. I think having the wherewithal to be able to actually articulate that myself yes. is also such a huge change from who I was 10 years ago. It's so hard to, like, that's with the emotional dysregulation. Mm-hmm. I struggle, like, just that, like, split second of, like, pump the brakes. Why Why are you feeling like this right now? Yeah. Even and if it's, it's just, like, I'm about to freak out, and this is why. Yeah. And just explaining what the freak out is about yes. so that they at least understand yes, why I'm, like, bugging. Yeah. I'm in a bad mood. I don't know why yet. Right. I just need a minute. Like, I'm just frustrated. I'm not mad at you. I am just frustrated. Yeah. I have gotten better with that. That's true. See, look at us. We're finding <laughs> the bright side. Ah. Uh, <laughs> please um, tell me this is a good thing. <laughs> Okay, so only two more things on this list. (laughs) Uh, The seventh item is don't forget that you have ADHD. This article mentions that once people make a few steps in the right direction, they abandon all strategies that got them to that place and backslide. Apparently that's a symptom of ADHD and that's normal. (laughs) So, you know, keep this article handy or try to, or this episode. Mm. (laughs) And, uh, you know, listen to it often. And, um, but... Even if you're going to keep this list and, like, just do quick bullet points to, like, keep on your desk at work or, you know, on your bathroom mirror so that you can just, like, quickly go through these yeah. little things. Yeah, that's a good idea. It's just, like, a visual reminder um, that, like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do a to-do list at night on work nights or something or school nights. And um, they this article also notes that, like, even if you're just hitting, like, four out of the seven tips, like, that's still a success. Like, it, yeah. you don't have to have a score of 100% every day. Um, if you have the ADHD with perfectionism. <laughs> right. And you require yourself to hit every single one of them every day. Otherwise, you're a failure. Yeah, you do have to practice and flex that <laughs> muscle. <laughs> um, and then, finally, this article noted that ADHDers frequently don't realize that they're stressed until they're on the cusp of a meltdown. <laughs> And holy shit, if that's not me. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't know what that's like at all. I've totally never done that. Yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> or the day before that. And definitely not the day before that. <laughs> yeah, that, it takes so much for me to realize that I am super stressed out. And mm-hmm. often for me, that's when I completely lose my appetite. Um, and that's how I know that I am like, real real stressed about Mm -hmm. something and yeah but it is so infrequent that that happens that I truly lose my appetite from stress so it it, I've gotten better at identifying it Mm -hmm. you know thanks to therapy but Mm -hmm. um yeah when that does happen it is very you know like I'll end up snapping at PK or something where not only are you stressed you're hungry and you don't realize it (laughs) right and you're exhausted because you haven't eaten I uh, give myself hang. I like pick and give myself hangnails. I do that on my uh, on my thumb especially, mm-hmm. which is interesting because this is also it's only on my right hand, and that's the one I used to suck on when mm-hmm. I was a kid. So and I'm right handed. So yeah, if I'm especially stressed, my cuticle will be fucked up, and then my yeah. nail tech gets mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I sit there and I give myself hangnails on every finger. It's a delight. <laughs> so uh ways to check in this actually mm-hmm. this article offered a couple coping strategies um to take inventory of yourself several times a day um I would imagine just doing this kind of with your meals would probably be an easier way to like cue yourself 
to do these things rather yeah. than being like really vague and say several times. Yeah, it's more it's like a gentle reminder. Yeah. Okay, how much water have I had? Have I right. moved at all? Have I you know had something to eat? <laughs> this article said, close your eyes and take twenty deep, slow breaths. Now I tried this. That's a lot. Yeah, I said I lost count, so just do that until you feel relaxed. <laughs> That's fair. I think fair. that's reasonable. Yes. <laughs> like 20 is so many breaths. That's a and lot of breaths. And are they counting inhale as one and then exhale as one? Or like inhale, exhale is one? I would say inhale, exhale is one. That's too many breaths. I feel like I would end up hyperventilating because then it All that too. becomes a time trial. Yes. <laughs> yeah, because like normally it's like four. Like you inhale to the count of four, exhale to the count of eight or something. Like you inhale quicker and then exhale slower. Okay. But, like, you go through that just, like, a few times. Because if I do that more than, like, three or four times, gonna I'm definitely going to pass out. Yeah. yeah 100%. So, um, I think the idea of, like, closing your eyes and mm-hmm. just breathing, mm-hmm. like, breathing intentionally. It's a great idea. Is just as effective as doing it for 20 times. That's a long time. Breaths. Yeah. Um, and then they said stand up and stretch for several minutes. Um in our office, we do have a lot of empty conference rooms throughout the day. So mm-hmm. um, if I really feel like I need to stretch, I'll do that. But I also have a standing desk. So yeah, I that's nice. Usually just face my ass towards my cubicle mm-hmm. and bend forward so that like that's nobody, true. nobody can really. Yeah, you're kind of tucked away. Yeah. Um, and if the weather is nice, just take a five minute walk, just five minutes guys. Or even sitting in the sun, especially in the spring, just Mm -hmm. recharging a little bit in the sun just is, it feels so, so nice. Yeah. That can be really crucial to like giving me a little pick me up. You're absolutely some sort of plant in a past life. Yeah. I usually describe myself as like a, an outdoor cat and I just come back for meals, (laughs) um, and attention. Mm -hmm. The rest of the time I'm pretty much outside recharging. Yeah. (laughs) Hissing at stuff. Hissing at things. <laughs> eating weird things. <laughs> and then I found a, the uh, the last source I found was from ADHDawarenessmonth.org. <laughs> Had an article about reducing stress when you have ADHD. And honestly, the way that this article was written online was like 10 out of 10. Like the changes in fonts. Remember I sent you that thing that was like how te- how things should be written for people with neurodivergence. Yes. It was kind of like that. Yes. Where different words in the middle of a paragraph were bolded, mm-hmm. but like throughout and they weren't always the same word. Nice. Yeah, it was yeah. honestly like a delight to read. But um so you know, good job ADHD awareness <laughs> people. Plus. You're good at what you do. <laughs> That's <was> weird. <laughs> Um, But the final article or the final takeaway from this article is that, you know, you do have to practice checking in on yourself and it's, um, you know, making a list of all your stressful things that are like kind of on your plate Mm -hmm. and then prioritizing which issue you want to tackle first. Um, If you're not sure how to prioritize that or you struggle with prioritizing, this article recommends using body doubling, which we've discussed Mm -hmm. in the past. Um, which I definitely do and didn't realize that I do. Yes. hundred percent. And, uh, so in the context of managing your stress, this article suggests sharing with your double what your stress list is and ask them for feedback on which thing they think is the most important or time sensitive and then tackle that. And if need be brainstorm that with your body double Mm -hmm. on like the best way to solve that problem if needed. Um, and you know, this podcast, for example, could, and, and the could body double podcast. with you where, uh, is obviously isn't like a Q and a format, but, uh, by all means chime in with your, your questions yeah. on, uh, on our socials and, uh, we'll do our best to answer them if we can. Yeah. Um, or respond with an unhelpful gif. Mm-hmm. One of the two. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I did note in here that Garrett and I already do this for each other. <laughs> Turns out. Hmm. Interesting. Organic. <laughs> and this article I thought was also very realistic in that it acknowledged that we aren't all starting from a place of exquisite lifestyles. Mm-hmm. So, like, not all of us can just 
change everything we do in our day-to-day lives at the drop of a hat. So, like, mm-hmm. to the extent that, like, a lot of these tips are, like, just go for a walk. Well, you know, maybe you don't have a safe place to walk outside if you yep. live in an area where you can't do that. Or um, you're, you know, you work in food service or mm-hmm. retail or something where the idea of, like, taking time to stretch isn't really, like... It's like eye roll and do yeah. something. Yeah. Like, just close your eyes in the middle of, you know, the lunch rush at mm-hmm. TGI Fridays and take 20 breaths. Not super reasonable. So I think that this article did a great job of acknowledging the fact that, like, you do kind of have to work within your own limitations and acknowledge Definitely. that, like, you know, some of these suggestions aren't perfect and, like, you do kind of have to figure out what does work for you. Right. And to the extent that we kind of sound like broken records, like working with a actual licensed therapist um, is very helpful. Yes. And can they are trained to help you think about how to do things differently. Yes. And how to manage your stress even. And like just to have the outside looking in mm-hmm. um, is so helpful. Like my therapist was like, have could you could you maybe go stretch? Could you could you go stretching? How about how about stretch? Can you stretch? <laughs> could you just do that for like twenty minutes and turn your phone off, please? <laughs> I was actually just I want to say it was a few weeks ago in a session. I said something about stress or you know feeling like I had a lot on my plate, and my therapist pointed something out like, oh well, you do really well with structure. So maybe approaching this from like a routine base and a structure base like how can you break things into a routine and I was like huh (laughs) yeah I guess I do do that (laughs) yeah it's a good idea (laughs) how about that interesting Hmm. (laughs) you're just gonna hold a mirror up to my face and show me it aren't you (laughs) oh I see what you did there Hmm, telling me about myself (laughs) crafty witch (laughs) Um, And then they also noted that um, the, for those of us in this category where our, some things in our lives are immutable, like if you Mm -hmm. have kids, their school schedule is their school schedule. So like, sorry, you got, you (laughs) kind of got to work with it. (laughs) Mm. Um, But they said that um, for those with that, then the article recommends setting up scheduled breaks within your regular work schedule. Mm -hmm. Um, or around your regular work schedule, making sure that you get enough sleep and exercising. Now for sleep, I have an alert set up through my Calm app to tell me at 10 p.m. or 9.50, I think, to like, it's time to start winding down. Oh yeah, yep, I have that on my phone. Usually I'm already in bed, but But it is a helpful reminder, especially like, especially on the weekends, I think, because I'll just put on a show and like binge it. Mm -hmm. And then before I know it, I'm, you know... It's like eleven o'clock, and I'm like, "That's literally what I did oh. last night." I looked. <laughs> I know. At my I watch. saw that you like sent me something on Instagram. I was like, yeah. "You're up late." <laughs> I looked at my watch. I was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna watch another episode. Skip. Let me skip these credits." And I looked at my watch. I was like, "It is eleven o'clock." Well, I've already started it. <laughs> Better watch the whole. I episode. saw that. It was like eleven thirty-five. Oh like, yeah. Shoo, girl was up late last night. Yep, and then I was like. I wanted to get up early. I better go to bed. <laughs> Lucky you. I showed up and I was like, I brought sneakers so we can go for a walk. <laughs> I actually went for a walk this morning. Oh, I good. did because I was really thinking about that green time thing and I was like, I really should. I can fit it in. And I went for like 20 minutes. And I was dragging this morning. Delightful. I meant to. And then uh, my alarm went off and I said, I don't really have to get up for another oh, hour. Yeah. Well, I did that, too. <laughs> like, I could have gone for a long walk this morning, but instead I was like, I'm going to lay in bed and scroll funny things in my feed. <laughs> and that's what I did instead of getting up. <laughs> <laughs> but to that point, um, this article also mentioned that we talked about last episode about that green time and how yep. actually... Being out in nature has been found to be helpful for those with ADHD symptoms. So you can still go for that simple, slow, 20-minute outdoor walk without headphones on even, and you'll get more from that and be less overwhelmed um, if by doing that rather than when you hear exercise. It doesn't mean that you have to join a gym 
and run four days a week and lift weights to or have be a plan. impressive. Yeah. Like, yeah, you, like you don't suddenly need to be going to spin yep. class three times a week. There's and, no agenda. It's just yeah. going. Right. Um, and I think part of the appeal of exercising outdoors or achieving movement outdoors is that there isn't that pressure. There's no, like, mm-hmm. benchmark to it other than, like, Eventually, I have to be able to get back to my car. There's no or my mirror. House. <laughs> You're not standing in front of a mirror, staring at yourself, sweating and breathing heavy. Yeah. You're. It's. It's really. It's a great mind clearing. Yeah, that's true. Nobody's amplifying my fupa when I'm trying right. to do a sit up or something. Right. I'm not assessing myself against other people that I'm seeing or being distracted by other people around me. It's. Yeah. It's just a really good way to clear your head. Um. And the last critical tip from this article, and our our last tip, I think, for this episode, um, at least that was researched, (laughs) Uh, in my opinion, was that they really um, argued in favor of effective communication and practicing effective communication, both by being a good listener And also being assertive and clear about your needs and setting self-boundaries and using your words to navigate conflict is a necessary skill and probably one that folks with ADHD have to work on a little bit more Um, because I don't think that I'm necessarily a poor listener, but um, I have had to learn over the years, and part of it could just be aging in general, but how to not have that canned response ready to go before somebody finishes their statement. Mm -hmm. Um, And, I mean, part of that is, you know, in law school, (laughs) learning when to shut up is an important skill that not many attorneys have mastered yet. (laughs) But uh, at the same time, I think, as we've said earlier in this even in this episode, is just being very clear about your needs. Like, I need quiet right now. And my mom would do that when we were kids because she was a single parent. Mm -hmm. But she would say, like, mommy's in timeout. You cannot, and we, you know, if somebody's in timeout, you can't talk to them. That's the rule. Yeah, they're in timeout. They're in timeout. So mommy's in timeout for 10 minutes. (laughs) And she'd set the timer on the stove. And then she would go and, like, not get talked to by her two kids. (laughs) For 10 minutes. To ADHD But she kids. would, like, yeah, she would regroup and, like, yeah. come back so that she could parent Great effectively idea. and yeah. play with us and not lose her freaking mind. Yep. Because, you know, we're really messy. Because <laughs> we were a lot. And she's not. <laughs> she's not a messy person. Um, but, yeah, just, and the article noted, you know, this is a learned skill and a muscle that requires development and especially for adults who didn't know that they had ADHD as children, I think yes, it's a much, it's in the, to the extent that as adults you can, um, I think, understand the importance of working on that as an adult. At the same time, you're starting off with a much more neglected muscle. So yes. it's, it takes more, thoughtfulness and mindfulness to like really practice it and Mm -hmm. and take those breaks like I think you know it's one thing to be like I just can't I like like you said like I'm really frustrated and I will get back to you when I can tell you why yep (laughs) I don't even know why but I'm mad so give me a minute and I will figure it out (laughs) I also think along that vein of being able to communicate yourself better I'm also making a concerted effort to Set in like any conversation with somebody, set an expectation of like a time that I'm supposed to be doing something, what the plan is, because I realized how often I was feeling stressed out just because of ambiguity, because something, a clear expectation wasn't set or a plan wasn't clearly laid out and it made me stressed out because I didn't know the right way to act or the Mm. right way to approach something. So that's something I also work on is just in general, making sure I'm understanding things clearly, I'm not misunderstanding someone, um, or maybe at least I'm catching it earlier in the process than Mm -hmm. completely having two different plans. Yeah, that is something that I struggle with because I'm the same way. Like, I like knowing what the parameters are. Like, Mm -hmm. um, in 
2020, my family, we kind of did like a big family reunion on Cape Cod where everybody had their own house and we only got together outside and did all that stuff. And, um, there were like theme nights, like we had like a, you know, disco night and a adorable St. Patrick's Day night Mm -hmm. and like, yeah, it's very cute. (laughs) Um, but at the same time, I was like, could you just tell me what time I'm supposed to show up, please? <laughs> like, yes. what is the plan? <laughs> because I work my way, like, backwards from yeah. that time frame. So it's okay. I have this much time to do this, this much. We did that last night. Yeah, Coming you did that. Time. And I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> I, I have to work it backwards. When do I have to leave? Okay, I and need And then I got dressed this, in this and this, I was like, this. oh, it's probably a good thing that Garrett made time for me to come home and change. So I don't show up to dinner in pajamas. Yes. Okay, what time do you need to be where you're going? Okay, so you have to leave here by this time to make sure you're going to have enough time to get ready. She was like, I mean, if I'm getting dressed up, I was like, we're just going to say this time. (laughs) Yeah, the look you gave me was like, you fucking heathen. You just, just trust me. (laughs) I will give us enough time for all the meandering. But, yeah, so that is uh, coping with stress. That was fun. Yeah, I learned a lot from it, I think. Yes. And really, I mean, yeah, coping with stress is going to come down to, like, tools. Like, there's no, that's a thing where there's no, like, medicining your way out of that. Like, it really comes down to your ability to, which emotional dysregulation is going to come down to your ability to, like, unpack those things, take a second, take a beat, and work your way through it. Yeah, and I to the extent that medication can help coping with stress, I think it really just helps with that executive function mm-hmm. aspect of things where, like, if I'm stressed because I just need to clean my fucking room and, <laughs> like, put the laundry actually yes. into the hamper, mm-hmm. and, like, even that small act of doing that mm-hmm. is, like, such a hurdle for me like, if I'm not clothes up. medicated. <laughs> yeah. So, like, those little things, like, to the extent that medication if that's something that you choose to use Mm -hmm. can help with those little things that aren't the real reason I'm stressed, but they're making it way harder to deal with the big thing that I'm stressed about because it's like, I can't get out of my own way. Right. And so, um, yeah, having those, those strategies, even if the to-do list, like wake up, immediately brush my teeth, Mm -hmm. turn on the coffee pot, empty the dishwasher, and then get in the shower. Like, if I have that actually written out, I'll do it. Like, right now, my dishwasher is full of clean dishes. No. <laughs> Why am I like this? Didn't go for a walk this morning, but also didn't empty the dishwasher. <laughs> Watch The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, though. <laughs> so that's why we only have to hit four out of the seven items and not seven out of the seven items. I did shower. I washed my butt. <laughs> That's the most important thing. <laughs> Got that, that real housewives ADHD and poop off of it. And, <laughs> and I didn't poop my pants, so it was a successful day. Yet. <laughs> Be kind because the bar is ankle high and you might poop your pants today. <laughs> yeah. Just shake it out. <laughs> or whatever Taylor Swift said. Take it. <laughs> Cuz she was clearly talking about pooping her pants. Yeah, shake it off like yeah. a yeah. like a dog with mud butt. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Taylor Swift. <laughs> what are, What is her fan community? Like, is there a name for them? Like, you know, like Beyonce, it's like the beehive. Like, does, are they like Sw- Swifties or Swiftheads or <laughs> Swifties. or Twifts or? Twifts. <laughs> I don't know, actually. Hmm. Um, we'll have to look into that. I know that my cousin uh, loves her. Mm-hmm. Hi, Jill. And... This is the same cousin who's a dentist and got her bag searched by TSA because she had a model of a mandible in it. So it looked like somebody's <laughs> jaw was in her luggage. So That's excellent. She like got home and there was like a tag in her inside her luggage. Like, sorry, we had to look in here. Yeah, a tag that said, uh, what the fuck? Excuse you, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, That's great. She was coming back from a dental conference. <laughs> That's like a New Yorker cartoon. Yeah. That's what that sounds like, that scenario. I imagine, though, also, because all of the dentists were leaving that conference, 
I wonder if TSA was just inundated. They were like, we've got a serial killer conference in town. Yeah, what is happening? Have I've never seen so many loose it's teeth like the in bone my collector. Life. I read that book. Did you ever read Gerald's Game by Stephen King? No. Oh, did you see that? Oh, there was, oh, you don't watch like scary, creepy stuff, right? No, I'm not. I'm not brave. Okay, it's a, it's, I'm not gonna go into I, an I did listen to the audiobook of The Outsider, though, by Stephen King, and that was phenomenal. Uh, the Stand is also phenomenal, too. That's another really good one. In um, audiobook form, or? Yes, I listened to that. It was many, many hours. Um, yeah, The Outsider, good. I think, was like 18 hours. It was yeah. crazy. I, well, yeah. I was driving to court a lot at the time. Yeah, so it's, it I had a long commute, and it took me like a month to yeah. listen to it. It was excellent, but in Gerald's game, there's a guy who's basically uh like a gay necrophiliac also mutant from inbreeding character who lives in the woods was an inbreeding with humans or inbreeding with uh he was the result of inbreeding but was a gay necrophiliac and so he was attracted to other males, but only if they were dead? I think he wanted... I think he was attracted to men, and if they were dead, it was a plus. Okay, so, like, or... <laughs> so, but he wasn't, like, coping with his he- homosexuality by being like, well, it's not a crime if they're dead. <laughs> like, um, it was, there wasn't, like, a religious sort of, like... They didn't really get that thing. that involved... Interesting. Um, into him, but, but why not? Because I'm he was, wondering. <laughs> that's definitely a cue for uh, Stephen King. Mm. Um, this Stephen guy would King, please uh, hit us up on Instagram since we don't play on Twitter. We don't. I mean, like, <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I'm just not willing to go to Twitter to ask this question. But the guy would go to cemeteries and like take the bodies from the cemeteries. But anyway, uh, he had this bag that was made of, like, it was leather from, like, people skin. Mm -hmm. And then inside of it, he had bones, just, like, little bits and bones. And he would shake this bag. And you can just, like, imagine how awful that sounds. And there was, like, this very graphic description. Maraca. (laughs) Yes. Um, And that's what I thought of when I'm thinking about all of these people going through the airport. With like <laughs> random bones and teeth is just this guy like shaking his bag with all of these like bits in it, these human <laughs> crunchy bits. Mmm. Nice. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. <laughs> and then I choke on water and I go. <laughs> Tune into Patreon to hear that story. Oh yeah, that's, that's great. a good one for me. <laughs> Well, thank you for tuning in to another episode of yeah. Bar's Ankle High. We'll see you next Thursday, gang. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be here next Thursday with a brand new episode to delight your brain juices. Until then, the best way to support us is to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and like and subscribe wherever you listen. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram at the Bar's Ankle High. And if you want to help us grow the podcast even more, you can subscribe to our Patreon at patreon.com slash the bar is ankle high. Patreons get exclusive Patreon-only episodes, monthly horoscopes written by yours truly, and access to our secret members-only Facebook group, as well as added to our close friends list on Instagram. We have a lot of fun over there, and we would love for you to join us. Until next week, remember to be kind to yourself, because the bar is ankle high.